topic called the power of testimony the power of testimony mm -hmm. let's open our bibles to psalm 66 verse 16 let's just pray before we read the word of god father we thank you for the entrance of your word give it light and understanding to the simple lord as your word comes tonight lord give us understanding reveal to us what we need to know what we need to change and let our life, O oh God, receive testimony by your grace and by your power. Bless your word today. Holy Spirit, take control. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. So let's open our Bibles to Psalm. Psalm 66, verse 16. 
Psalm 66. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Psalm 66, verse 16. Verse 16, amen. Verse 16, and it says, thank you, Jesus. It says, um, sister says, sorry about that. Okay, yeah, now I see it. Uh, verse 16, Psalm 66, verse 16, it says, Come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. Come and hear all ye that, he, that fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. This is David speaking here to the people. Because God just did a miracle for him. God just made a way for him. And he said to the people, Oh ye, everybody come. Let me declare before you what God has done. So he was willing to give a testimony of what God has done for him. So it's the same thing we have in the church today. Whereby we say, if you have any testimony, come forth and give what, what say what God has done for you. Is the same thing David was trying to do to let the people know that God has indeed done something for him. Now, like I said, the topic for today is the power of testimony. What is testimony? Testimony is a form of praise to God. Testimony is a form of praise to God because um, if you notice the word of God, it says um, our life is to bring glory to God. So every time God does a testimony, God does a miracle for us and we have a testimony when we go about telling people it brings praises to God. It brings honor to God. It brings adoration to God. It makes people to praise him that indeed you serve a great and mighty God. And it is also used to encourage ourselves in God. Now, when God does a miracle for someone, that's why I say when you have a miracle, don't keep it to yourself. Come out and share it with the children of God. Say it out. You might not just know the person that you might be helping out because so many of us are going through different things. We are all believing God for different things. And so, because we are believing God for, for different things, we need someone that can say, okay, I've been through what you have been through, and God has done it for me. So when you come out to testify, it encourages me or encourages any brother or any sister that is still going through that process that you have gone through and you are out of. It makes them to realize that God, if you can do it for this sister, if you can do it for this brother, even though I have not seen that which is for me, I know, Lord, you will also do it for me. So it is also a form of encouragement towards to the body of Christ. Let's open our Bibles to um, Psalm 22, verse 22. Psalm 22, verse 22. Amen. Amen. Um, are we there? Hallelujah. Psalm 22, verse 2. Okay. Psalm 22, verse 22. It says, when you, when you have gone through your challenge and God answers your prayers, make sure you share it with the believers. Do you see? This is even mm -hmm. in the scripture. He's saying, when you have gone through your challenge, when you have gone through all that you have gone through in your, in your different times in your life or in your season, God is saying to us right here that we need to share it. He says, Psalm 22, verse 22. It says, when you have gone through your challenges and God answers your prayers, make sure God is saying it to us. It's important we, 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 we say it to the people. He says, make sure you share it with your believers. You share it with your brothers and your sister because they are still, there are some of them that are still going through their process. So whenever mm -hmm. they see that God moved on your behalf, they realize that indeed some of them, let me tell you, anytime you, God puts it in your heart to testify before people or to say something to someone, maybe at that moment, that person is weak in spirit. 
Or that mm. person is feeling as if, oh, God has not answered my prayer. So mm. when God put the prompting in you to speak, it's because he wants you to say to the person, then when the person, when he or she hears what God has done for you, say, oh my God, so you are still in the business. God, you are still doing this. Ah, God means God, you are in the neighborhood. If you have done it for my sister or for my brother, I am next in line. It, it encourages them. It gives them strength. Mm. It strengthens their spirit. It, tre- it, it strengthens their soul. So it's important when God does things for you, no matter how you don't think it's little, so someone out there is a big thing. So when you say to them, it's like you are taking a load off their shoulder, the load of worry, of anxiety, of depression, of confusion. You take it off immediately and then they become focused on God, saying that, God, you did it for this sister, you did it for this brother, you will do it for me. So understand that every mess you go through in life, every mess you go through, God always turns it to be a message. Every mess you go through, God has a message inside. It's like, for instance, when you see the um, rose flower growing up, at first you don't like it. Like when you look at the stem, if you put your hand there, it ends up um, hurting your fingers. You don't want to touch it. But by the time you begin to see the flower coming out, like when you, oh, so this kind of flowers is inside this stem. You mean this kind of beautiful rose flower can come out? So it's the same thing we're saying. Inside that mess, inside that trouble you are going through, the, 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 the tribulation, the confusion, the obstacles you are going through in life, inside that thing, there is a message God is trying to teach you. You are going through that because tomorrow God is going to use you to speak to somebody. God is going to use you to encourage somebody. There are many times that even before I, I, I started uh, becoming a pastor or ministering and all of that, there are times that God has taken me through some process. And nowadays, I, I see myself that people come to me or I talk with people and then they are telling me what they are going through. And there's some similarities with what I've been through before. So it mm. makes it easy for me to tell them that, you know what, I've been there and out. You are coming out of it. Just remain where God wants you to be and be strong. It encourages them a lot. Mm. So inside every mess you go through, ask god what is the message in every trial you go through understand there is triumph in every in in every in every trials you go through there's triumph in every test realize in every test you go through in life there's a testimony in it so be strong tell yourself oh god this testimony i will not miss it and understand that the fact that you are a victim today of any problem you are going through does not mean you remain like that God can make you a victor. Amen. So hold on to God. Let God help you. Stand by him and tell God that God, everything I need to learn, help me to learn. It's just like Joseph. And I don't know why I keep talking about Joseph. Joseph. Joseph in the Bible went through a lot of challenges, but through the process, he was able to learn how to preserve food, how to store food for a long time. You know, he learned all of that through the process or through his wilderness process. That by the time the opportunity came for him, that when the king said to him that, you know what, in this old kingdom, you are the only man that is full of wisdom. So you will be the only one that will also be the one to build how, how we are going to preserve food and all of that. Imagine if Joseph did not go through that experience. He won't have known what to do. And the whole of Israel would have perished. And the whole of Egypt would have perished. So understand that everything you are going through right now, there is something that God is putting on the inside of you for tomorrow. For tomorrow. So don't feel like, God, have you forgotten me? No, he has not. Is a process. He's taking you through. The way we live our life also can also be a testimony. It's not just you talking to people, but the way you live your life. There are some people that are watching, you might not know, people are watching your move. People are watching what you're doing, what you are saying. And then you'll be surprised one day, one of them will confront you, will come in front of you and say, oh, I've been watching you since. You seem to be like, it's like you're a Christian, right? You know, I don't know if some of you have been asked such a question. You're a Christian. I noticed the way you behave, you know? So true that your life has become a testimony to people. Mm. They have seen how you handle things, how you behave when things are thrown at you. And they're like, no, this sister, no, this one, this one is different. She's different from every other Christian I've met. She, she, her life is a testimony. So understand, you can live a life of what? 
testimony. testimony. Amen. Amen. And so that brings us to how can you attract testimony to manifest in your life? How can you attract it? Number one, believe in God and his word. Let's open our Bible to Acts 16, verse 31. It says, the, number one, again, believe in God and his word. Yes. Acts 16, verse 31. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved, and even their house, even your household shall be saved. A good example of that is Rahab. Rahab was living close to the wall in her country. And then a time came that the children of Israel sent um, spies into the country to, to see how the place is so that they can know how to, to plan themselves in the war. Because Rahab was able to understand that by the knowledge of God, that these people are, are being helped by God. And definitely there's no place they decide to attack that they will not be able to win. Because she has heard different places of, of the things that they are doing in these different places. So what did she do? She tapped into it by believing that the children of Israel are going to conquer that land. She tapped into it by hiding the two spies. And when she did that, because of that single act, she was able to save not just herself, she saved our whole household. Everybody that was with her in that building, when the children of Israel came to her to take her away from the everybody that were with her, they were all saved. Our brothers, our sisters, our mother, everybody that was with any child, even if you're a friend, you were with her on that day, that person is saved. So because of the fact that she believed in the God of Israel, she believed in the people of Israel, she was able to save not just herself, she was able to save her, her household. That's what the Bible is saying here in Acts 16 verse 31 it says when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ thou shalt be saved and even thy household so it is important you believe in God believe in the God that you are serving believe in him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever think or imagine believe in the God you call Jesus believe in the God you call my lover you have to believe in God because if you don't believe in God, how can you get testimony? It's just like a father stands before his child and stretch out his hands with a gift in his hand. If the child does not know the father, he won't take that gift. He, the child will be wondering, why is this person? Who is this person? Why is this person giving it to me? But when the child sees that it's his mother or his father that is stretching out their hand, they run immediately with joy because they know for my father and my mother to bring a gift, that means there's something nice inside. And they're able to get what they want. So it's the same thing with God. If you don't know God, you cannot get what God has for you. You need to know him. And you need to also know his word. You need to study the word of God. You need to build your faith on the word of God. Even when you can't hear God, even when nobody is saying anything, you need to build your faith on God. It is very, very important that you build your faith on him. It's important. So if we look at uh, um, um, Hebrews 11 verse 1, before I, I get there, building your faith on the word of God. And also you learn to think positive because there's no way when you constantly build your faith on the word of God, you study the word of God, there's no way your mind will not become positive take away the thinking of negativity and occupy your mind with positivity which is the word of god in every situation we are going through there is a word of god for it to counter it so look for a scripture in every challenge you have look for a scripture so that every time that negative thought wants to come to you you have a scripture to cancel it to remind that thought to say no this is the counsel of god consigning me so when you address it like that, then that matter is being terminated immediately. Now, if you look at the Bible in Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
You know, you are hoping for something and physically you don't have it, but you believe that in God, through the knowledge of God's word, you believe that in time you will have it. So you need to believe God's word. You need to know God's word. You need to know what God is saying concerning you because the Bible says in Psalm 36 verse 9, it says that in the light of God, shall we see light? So in the light of God's word, we're able to know what destiny we are to fulfill here on earth. A path is being created for us to see how we can walk through to fulfill all that God has said concerning us. I pray for us in the name of Jesus. May the Lord fill our hearts to believe in his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Number two, believe in the prophetic word. Believe in the prophet in the prophetic word. Every word that God has spoken into your life through a pastor, through a friend, through anybody that this person that has spoken to you, please you need to believe in that word. You need to believe in it, okay? Because if you don't believe in it, you will not see what you are looking for. Believing in the prophetic word spoken to you by God through his servant, you have to believe that those words. Don't think sometimes when you see some prophet that are genuine, when they stand in front of you and they begin to make some prophetic word over your life, they are no longer speaking of themselves. It's the spirit of God that is speaking through them mm -hmm. to you, telling you directly things, information that you need to know or you need to have. So when you hear such word, believe what you have heard. Don't go home and start doubting and say, is this really God? Is this really possible? I know sometimes it might look like where i am not right now doesn't look like where god is saying i'm going to going to is it possible me is it possible yeah is, is this really real is god really going to use me yes you you right there god is going to use you so we believe in the word prophetic word that is being released to you the bible says in second chronicles 20 verse 20 i'm just going to read, read the last part he say hear me O judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall ye, what? Prosper. He first of all starts with believe in God. You know, that's what I was saying in the first, uh, uh, in number one, believe in God. And then believe in the prophets, so that ye might, what? Prosper. Okay. These are two Two, two things that are so essential for you to move to the next level in life and in destiny. For you to be able to attract your breakthrough, to attract your miracle, to attract your testimony. You need to believe in God and in the prophetic word that has been released through the servant of God into your life. You need to what? To believe it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Then number three. Number three says... Number three is feed your motivation. Now you might be wondering, what is this about? I should feed my motivation. Yes. Some of us, after some period of time, we get tired of, oh, I know God has said, God is always saying. Some of us, every meeting we go, people just see us and they start talking and say, oh, my life, God is always saying, I'm not seeing anything. So through that, you become weak, you become weary. You become downcast. You feel like God. Is it that God has forgotten what he said about me? The only way you can help yourself is through this. Is for you to find a way to encourage yourself. That is feed your motivation. It's just like a car. When a car is driving, you can't drive the car without the gas. You cannot do it. It's impossible. You have to put gas into it. You have to put oil into it so that you will be able to, to drive to wherever you need to go to. So it's important that you feed your motivation. Let's open our Bible to Romans 10 verse 17. Amen. Amen. Romans 10 verse 17. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god now i want to explain something to us something very unique i think would definitely help us um something that i've come to also use that has helped me a lot in times when it looks like i'm getting weary i'm getting tired 
I'm getting weak. Don't or don't think that oh, pastor, you too. No, you are pastor. There's no way you cannot you cannot be weak. No, we are all humans just like you, and we have uh, uh, um, emotions, we have feelings, we have different things at every stage in our life. But God has a way of arranging us back together through the knowledge of His Word. So, the best thing you can do for you to motivate yourself and to stay on track believing god for that miracle for that testimony is to what study about the fathers and the mothers of faith mm. go online study about them just find out about people that have been here before how were they able to there are so many books out there there are so many informations out there online of people that were that were pastors that were bishop that serve god and when you are able to study open the book and study about them sometimes you find that you see yourself relating with them you see yourself that wow you know what this person this is exactly what i'm going through this is exactly what i'm feeling i couldn't explain it but through that book you read you have been able to explain you have been able to understand what is what is going on Katrikuma, um, we all know, not in the Bible, we all know Katrikuma very well. Yeah. She's a woman that is filled with power and we saw how God used her in, in a mighty way. You know, it, it's the way God used her it was so awesome. So awesome, the way God used her. So there was a time I took a book. I love listening to her and also reading about her too. There was a time I took her book. She wrote a story about the different stages in her life, what she went through, how she felt, mm -hmm. and uh, different kinds of things. And one of the examples she, she gave, I found out that that's exactly what I'm going through at that moment, at that time. So I looked at her, I'm like, oh my goodness. So you mean even Katrikuma went through this, you know? And that's really kind of like, said my motivation that really strengthened me at that time because why at the end of the day i read the book to the end and i saw how she came out victorious and i saw i saw how god came through for her and through that my spirit was being strengthened you know i was no longer weak i was no longer tired i'm like oh god if you can do it for this woman that means you can still do it for me it's not through me you will change you you are the god that neither you, you are the god that does not change so definitely you will do it for me so read books read books about people find them if you don't want if you don't like a uh, um, male okay go for female go online and say just study about uh find st study about uh, uh, the fathers of faith the create those were christians the prices they paid and all of that when you read that you will find out that you will no longer look at the problem you are going through you look at yourself and say ah this problem i'm going to is even small compared to what all these people went through that means god you will do it for me i believe you you will do it for me so definitely you need to find people of faith and how and find out how they they face their challenge and how they manage themselves in crisis and read about their testimony how they came out of it how god came through for them then i don't know about you but many times when people come to testify online here or they call pastor and they tell pastor what god is doing and when pastor relates it to me my heart is filled with joy it gives me joy it, gives, it strengthens my spirit it strengthens my soul i'm like god thank you that means you are doing something in the lives of your people so that's what it this kind of a thing it also does to you when you read about it also it strengthens you it empowers you it enables you to stand firm and say god i am not going anywhere god you will answer my prayer and today oh god i believe in you so it's very very important that we have such people in our life amen amen amen, amen. 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 then number amen. four number amen. four thing is you must be faithful with your relationship with god you must be committed you must be constant you must remain in god these are ways that you can attract the, the testimony. These are ways you can attract miracles. These are ways that you can get all that God has said concerning you. These are ways that you can get it. If you practice this, I assure you by the grace of God, you will see what God 
we do for you and you will see how your spirit you will see how your your soul will become strengthened you will, you will no longer be weak you will no longer be tired you no longer you will no longer see yourself doubting god instead instead you'll be believing god you'll be saying to yourself oh god i know you will do it i know you will do it that's what you'll be saying that's what you will say so let's open our bible to galatians 6 verse 9 galatians 6 verse 9 amen galatians 6 verse 9 thank you jesus thank you holy spirit galatians 6 verse 9 and um it says and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not we shall reap if we faint not that means all that god has said concerning you if you don't go weary if you don't go weak in due season just know that every time what you are going to right now you are planting but in due season you will reap everything if you faint not let me give you a short story um i i, I watched a short video yesterday it was um uh, amazing what when when i saw what the message was about now there's this brother that goes to a church he's always playing the keyboard there and um, serving god and when he was playing the keyboard he said that uh they are not paying him and he got to a time that he was really going through some challenges he needed financial support he needed someone to help him but then no help was coming and every day was going to church to play the keyboard one particular sunday there's this um, husband and wife that came from overseas he did not even know that uh, there was a pastor um an husband and wife that were they were pastors they have a ministry in the uh, in the united states so he did not know he just played and all of that and he left so by the time he did that for so many years but by the time his miracle came it was nowhere to be found you do you know what this brother did he got to a time that the week the week that the people from overseas called that please oh we are looking for keyboards we don't mind we'll pay for the flight we'll play pay for his ticket we'll make the passport everything for him we just want someone we need the keyboard we saw that keyboard you have in your keyboard is you have in your church he did very well please we need that person urgently the pastor started looking for this boy he looked for him the boy said he's not coming to the church again that the church is not paying him that he shot he wants to start using his gift to go and do something else maybe to go and work in bigger church so that they will start paying him the pastor tried to reach out to him but he could not so they had to get another brother to play for them that sunday so the people from overseas they still called the pastor again please we are looking for this person this our department is suffering so the man was like the pastor was like i'm very sorry i've been trying to get across to this brother but please he just i just got a message from one of his friends saying to me that he said he's no longer part of this church again that is going to get help from somewhere so the man was like okay the people were like okay we understand but don't you have another keyboard this don't you have somebody else you can say it's very urgent do you know what the pastor the pastor was like yes there's one person but just wait let me get back to you do you know that, that brother that came that first sunday just to help that sunday the pastor was like hey, that boy played well i think we can send him do you know that boy walked into that place and ended up being the one getting the miracle and that that guy that labored all the years he missed it mm. Mm. he missed it that's god when i read the scripture that was what came to me i'm like oh my wow. god help me to remain steadfast mm -hmm. that in my time in my due season lord mm -hmm. i will reap everything i will not faint i will not go weary god help me i started praying for myself when i read that when i watched that video i started praying i said god please help me please help me we are going to use the scripture to pray we are going to say oh god please my father when my season comes lord help me help me to be at the place where i need to be to receive that thing that is for me let me not go weak let me not go weary lord help me let's open our mouth and begin to cry out to god 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, that we will not go weak or weary. Lord, help us, oh God, to stand in the place, to remain in the place that you have destined us to be in. Lord, we will not be distracted. We will not lose focus, oh God. Not at the last minute, oh God, we miss it. God forbid, oh God, that will not be our portion. That will not be the portion of our minister Abigail. That will not be the portion, oh God, of sister Jane. That will not be the portion of De Sister Deborah. That will not be our portion in Light World Kingdom Church. That will not be the portion of Pastor Moses. In the mighty name of Jesus, we shall remain steadfast, O God. Lord, you will strengthen us. Lord, you will strengthen us in the mighty name of Jesus. Empower us, O God. Empower us, O God. We will not go weary. We will not go weary. In due season, we shall reap everything that is for us. We will not faint, O God, in the journey of our life. In the journey of our life. Lord, we will not faint. We will not go weak. We will not go tired. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, help us. We need your help, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to remain rooted in you. Help us to remain steadfast in you. Help us to remain in you, oh God. And not go weak, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to intercede for yourself. Intercede for light working of church. Intercede for Pastor Moses and family. Intercede for your for your spouse. Intercede in the name of Jesus. Lord, we will not go weak. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not go tired. In the name of Jesus, we shall remain in you. We shall remain in you, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, according to your word in Galatians 6, 9, that Lord, we shall not go weary. We shall not go weak. We will not go weary in well-doing. Lord, in due season, Lord, we shall reap all that pertains to us uh, from the labor that we have labored uh, in your kingdom in due season. Uh, Lord, we shall reap uh, from the seed we have sown uh, in due season. Uh, Lord, we shall reap uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we shall reap, oh God, uh, in the name of Jesus. We pray for light working of church. Uh, Lord, your church will stand uh, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Pastor Moses. Uh, Lord, you will strengthen him. Lord, you will strengthen him. Lord, you will strengthen him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, strengthen him. Lord, he will not go weak. He will not go weary. He will not faint. In the mighty name of Jesus, our faith shall be strengthened. Our faith shall be strengthened. Our faith shall be strengthened. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we're praying. Amen. At this moment, we're going to pray that, oh God, give me Oh, my Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. At this moment, we are going to pray. God is dropping a prayer point in my heart. We are going to pray that, oh God, in any way I have doubted your word, in any way I have doubted your counsel concerning my life, in any way. I, I have complained instead of thanking you or instead of praying to you Lord please have mercy upon me because the Bible says if we doubt God if we doubt the word of God then we will not be able to to get that which pertains to us we will not be able to get that blessing so we are going to pray tonight oh God anyway I have doubted Lord I repent in the place of doubting Lord give me faith Give me faith, oh God, to stand. Give me faith to stand. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, give me faith to stand. Lord, give me faith to stand. Any way I have doubted your word. Any way, Lord God Almighty, I have, I have said words out of my mouth that is not pleasing to you. Concerning the word that you released over my life. Lord, please, I ask of you. Forgive me and Lord, give me faith. In the place of doubt, Lord. 
Lord, give me faith. In the place of that, Lord, give me faith. In the place of fear, Lord, give me faith. In the place of doubt, give me faith. In the place of fear, give me faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, faith to hang on. Faith to hold on, hang on. Faith to still believe in the midst of what I'm going through. Lord, give me faith. Fuel me with faith. Fuel me with faith. Fuel me with faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, give me faith. Lord, give me faith. I will not give in. I will not give out. I will not throw in the towel. I will not let go. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, give me faith. You Lord, give me faith. Lord, give me faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, give me faith in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you one short story about this woman, like the woman I was speaking about, Katrikuma. There was a time she was going through something in her life, and it looked like everybody turned their back on her. Nobody was accepting her, nobody wanted to do anything with her. Sometimes when she has something to do, when she goes to the place that, oh, today I've come to, to preach or do anything, they ended up canceling the meeting and she goes home crying to God. She went through that season where she was rejected. Mm -hmm. But when the time came, God gave her the right people. God gave her the right man, woman, that when she went to preach in that place, and then they, they said, oh, we want you to be our pastor. She said to them, no, people are rejecting. She said to them, people are rejecting me. You know, this is what is happening. This is what is going on. That's what she, she was telling them. But the people said, we don't care to know the people that are rejecting you out there. But what God has said to us, God has said that we should stand with you. And we should help you grow the ministry. That is why you and I know Katrikuma. Mm. Because of men and women that stood by her. The reason why you and I know about Jesus Christ is because of the disciples that stood by him. Mm. The reason why you and I know Moses is because of people like Joshua, Caleb, that stood by him. Mm. People like Aaron that stood by him. His sister that stood by him. Now, I want us to use this, this verse to pray for Light Watch Kingdom Church. We are going to pray, oh God, for Pastor Moses, giving men and women, boys and girls that will stand with him. That no matter the rain, no matter the season, they will stand with him. If you look at the Bible, even David, when David was, was when David became an outcast, when Saul drove him out, he was running for his life. If you notice, strong men from the city, his brothers, his sisters, they went to meet him in the rock. They went to meet him in the wilderness where he was hiding. And they said, we have come to stand with you. We have come that they went through different years. They were going through countries, hiding away from Saul. They stood by what? They stood by David. So you are going to pray, oh God, give Pastor Moses, men and women, boys and girls, that will stand for him. When it's raining, they will stand. When the sun is shining, they will stand. When it's time to sow, they will stand. When it's harvest time, they will stand. Just begin to pray for Pastor Moses and Light Watch Kingdom Church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, give your servants, men and women, that will stand by him, oh God, to help him fulfill the calling that you have released upon his life, to help him fulfill, oh God, his destiny concerning Light Watch Kingdom Church. Let help them, oh God, Lord, give Pastor Moses, men, women, boys and girls, whose hearts you have touched, to help the church, to stand for the church, to be a pillar, to hold the hands of Pastor Moses. Lord, give them to us, wherever they are. Lord, bring them to us. Wherever they are, bring them to us. In the east, in the west, in the north, in the south. Lord, bring them to us. Bring them to Pastor Moses. Cause a divine connection.
connection. Give him help us. Give him assistance. Give him people that will stand with him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, help your servant. Lord, help your servant. Lord, help your servant. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, help your servant. Give us men and women that will be committed to your work. Give us men and women that will support your servant. That will not sleep or rest until the destiny of this church stand. Or they will help him until the day the church can stand. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, give us faithful men. Lord, give us faithful women. Faithful boys and girls. Committed soul whose heart is sold out to the work of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. American, Mexicans, Africans. In the mighty name of Jesus. Europeans. In the name of Jesus. Lord, give them to us. Asians. Lord, give them to us. Oh God. Ethiopians. Lord, give them to us. Wherever they are. Lord, we call them forth. Lord, we call them forth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that we help your servant. Lord, that we help your servant. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help him. Lord, help him. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I declare over your life and your destiny. As a result of the word of God we have read today, we have studied. I declare in the name of Jesus that you are next in line to testify in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare over everything that pertains to you concerning your life, your ministry, your destiny, your career, your job. In the name of Jesus, your health. I declare you are next to testify in the name of Jesus. Amen. May May your life attract testimony. May your life attract breakthrough. May your life attract evidence in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare a turnaround over your life and your destiny. That everything that God has said concerning you in the word of God and also through the servant of God, under the anointing of the servant of God, we place our demand upon the anointing of Pastor Moses and we join our faith and declare tonight in the name of Jesus, you shall testify. You shall testify. You shall testify. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Lord, because the season has come in the name of Jesus. I hear in the spirit, the season has come. Your season has come. Your season has come. Your season has come. The time to reap has come. You will reap in abundance in the name of Jesus. There shall be an overflow in the name of Jesus. You will not be dry in the name of Jesus. When men say there's a casting down, I declare for your life and your family, you will say there is a lifting up. When people say there is dryness in the wilderness, I declare there shall be a flow in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus because God says so because God says yes no man can say no in the name of Jesus thank you Holy Spirit blessed be your name Amen. blessed be your name Amen. I yet my spirit you are next to testify in the name of Jesus Amen. you are next to testify in the name of Jesus your season your time has come Amen. Your time has come. Move Amen. into your level. Move Amen. into your season. In the Amen. name of Jesus, Amen. you shall celebrate. You shall be Amen. called celebrate. You Amen. shall be called celebrate. Amen. You shall be called in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you know, it's what you say that is what will happen to you. A good example is this lady, uh, Messi Chinwe. We all know her very well, the good singer. One of her songs, she sang this song. She said, they called me blessed. They call me blessed. Unknown to her that she will get married to a man that is called blessed. blessed. <laughs> Many times they invite her to sing this song. She goes around singing. Unknown to that, she's singing, blessing the life of people. She was also blessing herself because she, she used the word, they call me blessed. 
And that was how God gave her a man that is blessed. And his name was also blessed. So, be, I will say this to you. Take charge of your destiny. Mm -hmm. Don't close your mouth. Open it and begin to make declarations. We are almost at, at the end of this year. You can't live the same way you live in 2022, inside 2023. No, God forbid. It's not your portion. So start making declarations now of what you want to see. Start offloading now. Every luggage, every weight you have been carrying, start dropping them now because we're almost getting out of 2022. Start dropping them so that you will enter 2023 light. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. amen amen let's give a clap offering unto the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus.